Yep. Church, everyone. Hi. Hello. Uh, I am Giovanni, and thanks everyone for uh, being here. Wow, it's always heart breaking a lot of people. Uh, I want to start uh, this talk by uh, giving my huge thanks to the organi organization, which is giving me uh, another chance to present uh, uh, my researches and my tools. Um, so uh, let's start. What is this talk about? Uh, I'm going to introduce myself and what I do for a couple of minutes. I would uh, recap about, I will give a bit of uh, information about what is Frida, uh, some facts of the 2020, and I will go straight to demo uh, my tool uh, and with some user, different usage case. And later we will serve some uh, minutes for the questions. So uh, my name is Giovanni. I am an, an Android developer, self-growth. Uh, I'm actually employed as a full-stack developer for uh, the overworld. I'm a security editor uh, with some focus on the user space and ARM ARM64. Uh, I am an active uh, open source contributor and the founder of uh, an awesome crew of uh, beautiful minds. So uh, I started my uh, talk two years ago by asking uh, if anyone in the room uh, knows about Frida. And back in the days, just two or three guys risen up their hands. And I'm, a bi I'm sure that uh, nowadays more people know about Frida and what, it, what is it and what it does. Uh, I will give a, a little explanation about what is it for who's not knowing it. Uh, Frida is likely a, a framework which injects uh, the, JavaScript, the JavaScript engine into the, into the target process. And it exposes some high level APA to play with the uh, memory context of the, of the processes. And so it's just like many other tools and framework which allows you to debug and instrument the process, but uh, uh, it's, um, it's awesome uh, because uh, of the design and how it has been built. So it allows developers from all around the world to extend it and to build a lot of tools uh, on top of it. And so we are going, I'm going to show uh, one of those tools that I built uh, during the past year. So those are some facts of the 2020. I'm not going to read them all, but uh, just uh, the one that I think it's the most important one, like securing the user space, it's impossible by design. Uh, I'm still being contacted by companies which claim to have a, a solution that uh, makes uh, applications and services uncrackable. And well, that's not, not possible, of course. Um, and so how is the user space protected nowadays? Uh, ob obviously, it's uh, it's uh, it's abstract. Uh, there are uh, more things uh, which, we, which we can speak about, like for hours and hours. So I um, cap them into those uh, five points. So obfuscation. Uh, there are uh, the, most of the commercial compilers uh, use a fork of LLF, LLVM. Uh, string encryptions, anti-debugging, anti-tampering, and inline syscalls. Those are the uh, most used techniques by different compilers. So breaking the user space uh, is mostly about time and effort. So as I said before, uh, uh, it's impossible to secure it by design. And there is still a cat mouse running. Uh, and it will always be a cat mouse with mitigations and, and stuff added uh, time to time. Uh, it's not about coding for, for production. I added this uh, little line because uh, if you do uh, malware analysis or uh, reverse engineering in general or uh, cracking or whatever, uh, you should know that uh, no one is reading your code. So I have like papers of uh, uh, shitty code 
uh, that no one will read, so it's not important. And what is important to know is that uh, no one will read your code, so you can experiment colorful ways to uh, achieve your objectives. Um, understanding how the system loads and runs executables uh, is the key to win. So if you know, in example, uh, I added two points, uh, DT init and DT init ar array, um, which are uh, uh, the functions that, uh, the, that are uh, the, the constructors of the modules, and that's manipulation. Uh, also, GitHub offers an arsenal of, of weapons for uh, malware analysts and uh, crackers and export developers. I kept them. I put those four, which are my favorites. So, Frida, Unicorn, Engine, and Capstone and Keystone, which are uh, used to disassemble and assemble of code. So, uh, what we've built to make it fun? By we, uh, I'm meaning. Uh, me and the crew of guys uh, that I'm, uh, there is a link later if you wish to join, it's a Slack channel, uh, which has now 300 people, including the best uh, developers from all around the world. And so what we've built, uh, we are actively working on Dwarf, uh, which is a, a full-featured uh, debugger uh, built on top of PIQT and Frida which is the one I will demo later. Uh, we've built a unicorn dop debugger, which is a, um, a GDB-like debugger uh, to emulate uh, binaries uh, of ARM, ARM64, x86. Um, and you can emulate them on a static, on a static context. So that's, that, that helped also some faults uh, at, the def at the DEF CON calls this year. Um, and we've built a free Android injector, uh, which is a, an SDK, uh, which allows you to inject uh, the Frida gadgets into, the, into, into applications. And those can be also pushed on the Play Store. I personally had, have some applications on the Play Store uh, running with uh, Frida uh, bounded into them. So uh, anyway, you can find uh, uh, on my GitHub a lot of tools and public uh, researches. So to, re to recap, this uh, talk uh, will be mostly about Dwarf, which is uh, uh, what uh, I'm working uh, since uh, one year. And let's say it's uh, the, the tool which pack all together um, all the things I had to code to uh, fight against uh, compiler and packers. And we built, we built it uh, considering the following stacks. So Everything needs code. There is no tool which gives you magic powers. So no tools which, uh, like, uh, you push play and the things happen. Uh, setting, setting up the, envi the environment to debug a process is uh, redundant and painful. So uh, it's, it's, it's stressful every time. It's the uh, same code, same processes to beginning. And it's a balance between being quick and the visual information that we can see. Um, this might need a bit of explanation. Uh, like in example, I can say that if you are an exploit developer and you are uh, like fuzzing some kind of MEM CPI, uh, you should know that may probably this MEM CPI is gonna, is gonna hit like a million of times in a minute. So you have not properly way to, uh, in example, lock the buffer that's passing through this MEM CPI. There must be a customization specific for each OS. So uh, as I said before, uh, knowing the system is important. I'm personally uh, more, more skilled in the Android. So I know uh, about how the system loads the applications uh, since the moment of spawn to the moment of uh, class initialization and stuff. But uh, well, we are still looking for uh, an iOS legends that join uh, that join us and maybe help us to improve the tool. So uh, we have extended Frida uh, and we give it an UI. Uh, as I said, it's supporting any OS and Arch, but this is mostly thanks to Frida. Uh, we added a code, a code editor 
which is upcoming, and I will show you later some screenshot of the current version, and I will demo the version which is upcoming uh, in the following days. There is interactive display of registers and memories and instructions, and it, it's extendable with plugin. There is a plugin system. Uh, we are not giving a damn if you like mess up with our tool. Like you can hook whatever. We give freedom to extend it in the way you like more, and which obviously fit the usage case. Uh, there is Java decompilation, breakpoints, variable inspector, uh, watch points also, and uh, we've packed inside a lot of uh, open source tools uh, to. Uh, to ex extend the features of the of the tool. So uh, those are the features in the tiles, uh, because uh, I think it's uh, good to highlight how we uh, achieved something. Uh, in example, uh, the watch points. Um, watch points, uh, as you might know, uh, needs hardware support when you run them with, the, in example, GDB or LLDB. And we managed to achieve it. Uh, with a combination of M protector and uh, uh, exception handler, so we um, kind of uh, we are kind of able to understand when a memory address is being read or write. And Dwarf is actually the unique tools, the unique tool which give you the capability to instrument the DT initialization array, uh, which is where uh, most of the malware and uh, and packers and general compilers uh, used to uh, make them tricks to prevent debugging and obfuscation. So the, in example, um, uh, if you ever face an Arxan protected application or game, uh, those things happen. Uh, mo most of the things that are happening in the DT initialization uh, functions. Uh, we made the setup of the tool uh, very automated, so it's all about to git clone and run the setup, or uh, even with pip3 you can install it, and the tool will automatically install everything else. So the Frida binaries and dependencies, etc. So this is the tool in the early 2019. So this is my first version. Uh, I coded the whole UI and the backend. Uh, suddenly, after a couple of months, a uh, guy uh, popped on my Slack from nowhere, and he said, uh, your UI suck, I can do it better. So I said, okay, go for it. And this is how it became in the late 2019. Uh, you can see there is the, comp the compilation and graph, which is powered by Radare. Uh, and yeah, we will see later the various panels. So right now, Ooh. so I'm going to start the tool. Is it okay? The zoom, you can see it. Fine. I can eventually maybe do like no. Okay. So uh, this is the upcoming version, which uh, we are going. We we plan to release this week before my presentation, but uh, we figured out that uh, we still need to uh, port something, so we plan to release this uh, in the upcoming week, hopefully. Uh, the, the bigger new thing is that we finally added a code editor inside, uh, which, is, uh, um, which accepts, obviously, the Frida APA, if you are uh, comfortable with them or Dwarf APA, since we are uh, providing also our own APA documented in my website. So the UI, uh, the UI is composed as following. In the left side, there is uh, the, the little panel in which you can add uh, um, breakpoints and watchpoints and Java breakpoints and Objective-C breakpoints, and also the in module initialization breakpoints. In the center, there is the editor with some tabs which will pop uh, later on say attached to a process. There is the context panel, which will have uh, Java arguments, registers, and Objective-C arguments. There is a panel for backtrace and a panel for uh, the threads, which will uh, give you information about all the threads running on the process. There are three, three types of consoles. There is a JavaScript one, a Python one, and uh, well, the output one is not really a console, but just uh, an output. Uh, obviously, those uh, evaluate your JavaScript and, uh, and your Python 
with Frida API and Dwarf API. On the left side is pretty new. So this is a new feature added by, uh, by the guy that designed the UI. Those are a variable observer. So the tool is also um, shipped with this feature uh, with which you can uh, uh, observe variables for change. So kind of watch points, but specific for variables. And we will see later all the tabs that will pop. So now I, I'm attaching to Android. So the icon is Android. You can also run it on local or on a remote target. Well, the, the tooltip is wrong. Fix it later. So those are all the processes on my phone. On the left side, we can spawn a process. So we have control since the uh, moment of, uh, of, the, of the very first moment of the spawn. And on the right side, we can attach, attach to running processes. So I'm going to start a random application, Alitalia maybe. That's good. You're right. Yep, it should happen every time. It's process timeout. Always happen. Yep. OK. So some new tabs popped. popped. So we got this assembly, loaded modules. We can tap into them and check import and export. We can eventually breakpoint by right click and, uh, and breakpoint straight to the target. We have a Java inspector, which also has all the Java classes. We can tap into one, in example, and check the methods here. Uh, there will be also Java decompiler, uh, which I'm not going to show now uh, because it's untested, so I'm a bit scared to open it. Um, so the first thing I want to show is how easy it is to add a breakpoint. Uh, you can do it by code or by UI. Uh, so uh, I'm going to like add here. And another cool feature, which is new, it's not, uh, it's not running. I, I mean, you won't find it in the current version. Uh, it's a thing that uh, we, uh, we managed to uh, give you a chance to add your code when the function on, on the entry point of the function and on the exit point of the function. So I'm going to like uh, remove the comment. So to return me to return one, and because I want to break. And in the address field, uh, any field inside the tool uh, evaluate also API from Frida and Dwarf. So I can, in example, use find export open to immediately get the pointer of open. And once I release the process, because Oh, I forgot to say sorry. Actually, we are breakpointed in the very first spot, which is breakpointable uh, on uh, on Android. We are inside the runtime common init, which is a system component, which later load all the classes. And if I resume the execution, we are hitting the breakpoint. So something more we can do is copying the address and go into the JavaScript. So uh, open as in the first register the path of the file we want to open. So in example, we can retrieve this file in some kind of uh, colorful ways, um, something like that. It should probably work. Yes. So uh, you have various different ways to get the path or uh, instrument on the arguments. Um, so we will go on by showing the, uh, the new editor. In the new editor, you see I've, I've packed uh, five demos for today. Uh, I'm not sure I can show all of them, but I will start uh, one by one. There are snippets also. We are going to add a lot of snippets. So in example, you can just like, if you don't know, wow, not working. Yep. It was working this morning. OK, yes. So in example, if you don't know how to do something, we are going to add a lot of snippets into this. And yeah. So 
oh, you can also change DIM, uh, but this is something up to the other guy, which is making cherries like this uh, all around. Uh, like also you can change the global team. Like I personally like the black one and I fuck it up, everything. No, it's okay. So you can also change DIM to light or dark, but this is mm, cherries features. So the first script I've packed is something uh, that I've been asked like uh, almost uh, one ev every week. Like there is someone which uh, came to my Slack and asked me like, hey, I want to um, unpin the SSL certificate of this application. And every time I say, you don't need to waste your time to unpin the certificates when you can just hook low level APA which are involved with the SSL transfer of, of the data. So uh, you can just hook those two, function, those two functions, SSL write and SSL read, and you just have the plain SSL uh, data which is going through the application. So uh, with the 22 line of codes, you are able to read the, um, the network uh, transfers uh, between of the applications and to uh, push them to the, to the UI. We, we made a, a special widget, uh, which is for uh, like um, if you want to generate reports or uh, make penetration testing on applications and you want to like uh, uh, highlight uh, different kind of data, you can use this APA, which is show, that, show data with uh, the various arguments, uh, which I will explain later. Uh, okay, if we now run this script on the same target, Oh, God. Let's restart it. Awesome. OK. So this new panel now, it's appeared. Uh, and obviously, uh, like, I used it, whoop, no, oh, it's crazy. I used it out and in as a key. You can set whatever you want here. And if you click inside, uh, if you click on anything of them, you will see the plain, the plain network request going through the app. And you can eventually add more code to alter uh, the, uh, to alter the bytes of the request. So uh, by we, we are keep uh, giving a look to the data view, which is also pretty new. And uh, I will go straight to the uh, second, uh, to the second script I've prepared, which is something very easy. Uh, we've added, uh, um, uh, we've added the SQ SQLite uh, visualization to to the tool. So. Uh, you can also uh, dump straight from the phone all the database uh, on the applications. And I've prepared this script not because I want to, uh, yes, well, I want to show uh, the S SQLite viewer, but also uh, to maybe the WhatsApp developers will see this video uh, one day in the future. And maybe they should remove the line that say that uh, the database is encrypted because it's not. Like it's plain. So it's bullshit. Like, and it's bad, it's terrible. If, if you consider that they are not checking the length of peer-to-peer -peer packet, this is terrible. Uh, so I'm going to target WhatsApp. Yeah, we, we still need to make a right click to clear this list, so the database will appear on the bottom of this list. So as you see, I can get into my message store database. And I didn't add that any, any lines of code to decrypt for decryption. So those are my chats in plain. And well, it's not, it's not that best. But it's good to show the SQLite uh, viewer. So you can also see all the, all the tables. 
This also applies to Telegram. So don't think that Telegram is uh, more secure than WhatsApp. It's the same. Telegram database are also planes. You can try the tool later with, uh, with Telegram database. So uh, I'm going to show now the third script, uh, which is safety net. Like, there are a lot of people that still came to my Slack and say uh, uh, there is safety net in this application, which is uh, a pain in the ass to bypass. There is attestation, so we can't use the, the root on uh, applications to pay, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, my first question is uh, like, uh, yeah, it's uh, like uh, you can read uh, everywhere that uh, safety net uh, is uh, it's painful to debug and instrument, but did you ever uh, like uh, instrument or debug on safety net? Like uh, there, there are no anti-debugging at all, no protections at all, like no inline syscall. So where is the stack? Uh, and so I've packed this script uh, in which I want to show uh, like uh, what is safety net doing uh, to uh, tell that the device is uh, uh, good or not good. So ah uh, yes. What is this script basically doing? I'm attaching through to uh, three um, system API on libc. I'm, atta I'm attaching uh, fascia set, open, and stat64, which uh, li like um, when, I, when I was instrumenting the process, I've attached a, li a list of them, but uh, those, those three are the one involved. Oops. All right, now with the phone, I'm going to uh, use the application to uh, the safety net tester to check the, the status of safety net. And what we want to see will appear in this console, hopefully, if the demo won't fail. Oh, why? Nope. Uh, let me restart it. So every time there is, uh, like, uh, some kind of conflict if I uh, attach to two different targets. Uh, version three safety net. Okay. Okay, let's, oh yeah, okay. So what is basically doing safety net? Like I, fi I filtered some paths. I it's reading more paths, but uh, well, the important one uh, is that it's trying to search for su binary and mapping all the system, system binaries. I'm showing just uh, X, X binary and binary, but it's, it's also mapping all the data local files, system XBIN files, is reading the C Linux state. And I'm not saying that returning minus one to anything of this will break safety net. So that was uh, like uh, not, not that hard at all. The fourth script I've packed, uh, like I have 20 minutes. So yes, I think uh, I want to probably show, yes this one. So uh, I'm following Supercell games since like three years. Uh, I've been at the Supercell offices yesterday uh, to have a speech with them. And Supercell games are protected with a famous uh, compiler, uh, which uh, actually uh, no one provided an open source solution. I'm sure there are people around the world which uh, managed to break it, but uh, Seems like they are keeping the solutions by themselves. And one key to win these protectors uh, was by using Watchpoint. Uh, and well, it was the key to win a lot of protectors. But uh, this specific case, uh, Watchpoint was very useful. I'm very sorry that I can't show you the UI Watchpoints right now because they are not fully implemented in this version. But the current version, which you can install on GitHub, has also the UI with watch points. 
So as I said in my introduction, uh, we are achieving watch points by basically using mProtect and removing the read and write permission to a specific address. When the target try to read this specific address, the program crash, and we handle this exception. So we set it back to read and write, and at this point we know that uh, which, is, which one is the address that is trying to read and write or, uh, on our target address. So uh, what I'm doing now to replicate this behavior is on this line, on the 13 line. So I'm, I'm scanning for some patterns that uh, are actually my real target. And this array will be filled with like uh, 100 address, probably, or something like that. And we are just taking the, the first one and removing read and write permission on one byte. So if I run this script now, so hopefully it won't mess up with the, uh, with the safety net one. So I will go in example to browse stars. Oh, time out. It's time out, so sometimes I don't know, like, yeah. Okay, now it should work, yep. So we are going to resume the process. And technically, we should hit uh, like some watch points. No, we are not. I'm sorry for this time loss, but I need to refresh every time. Something we are going to work, work out those days. Ah. Okay. Yes. Wow, all right, all right. So uh, those logs will be like, um, if you install the current version of this debugger, uh, will be like uh, in UI. So I'm just logging what's happening. And what's important to read is operation read. So we know that something is trying to read that address. And we know uh, which one is the address that is trying to read, uh, that is trying to read our target. So we can just jump on the disassembler, which I didn't show before. Uh, we can just jump over there and check what's going on. And Well, I know what's going on, but in your target, you will see uh, some kind of things happening there. The last one script I've prepared, it's another script I can't demo uh, because uh, we are still porting the features. Uh, but uh, when I, I been invited to Barcelona uh, this summer, I met a guy which asked me, hey, do you think uh, we can fuzz the MEM CPI uh, of, um, of, of WhatsApp? You, mi you might know that uh, this summer uh, there, there, there was the huge uh, SRTP vulnerability overflow on WhatsApp. So he said to me, okay, uh, do you think with Frida we have an uh, uh, easy way to fuzz on this MEM CPI? And I said, yes, uh, if you tell me, I'm not an exploit developer, but if you tell me what I have to code, I will code it for you. And so I've prepared those uh, 14 lines of script for exploit developers uh, to show that you can also do uh, some kind of fuzzing uh, with, this, with this tool. And what I'm doing is, on the first line, 
I'm adding the module, the module initialization. So we are uh, breakpointing into uh, the moment that uh, WhatsApp is loading the libwhatsapp.so, which is the one uh, which shipped the SRTP module. Uh, when, we are, uh, uh, when we are leaving, we are getting the base of the libwhatsapp, and we are getting the current read, and we are getting the target. So how do I get this target, uh, would be your question, because it's, uh, it's a static offset. So um, this is all also thanks to the WhatsApp de developers, which makes everything easy. So you can just go to um, the WhatsApp directory, uh, and you can do something like uh, grip overflow. And you get the pointer of the string. Uh, they, they are used to also, when they patch the vulnerabilities, instead of adding uh, complexity, they, they prefer to give the vulnerability to everyone. And so you get the offset of the string. And it's enough to xref uh, the string. And you get uh, where, where, where is the, the, the infamous main CPI involved with the, with the bug. So you will end up by getting this, uh, this offset. And well, what's later? I'm just uh, adding a, a breakpoint to this, an, a hook to this, uh, to this address, and chained follow, following with the, the to hook the first MEM CPI happening right after it. So if you try these 14 lines of code, and you ask your friend to call you, uh, you will hit this breakpoint, and at this point you can bomb the, this MEM CPI with uh, your favorite sheets. OK, so I think that that's all. Uh, we have 10 minutes. Do you guys have any questions uh, about what I said? <laughs>